At this time, I would like to open the floor for questions from the media. Bibi, you have the floor. Uh, good morning, uh, ministers. Thank you, Marsha. Um, first off, I, will, I was planning to go to the Minister of Romi, but since you brought up the Ministry of Tiat, uh, Minister Boseman, um, I know that this is a kind of hectic situation for you with two ministries, two heavy ministries. Can you tell me that with the situation with, uh, with Insulaire, um, AVA, they had submitted a request to get a, a permit for, from St. Martin, and I believe that permit is pending. Um, are you contemplating or even thinking about granting AVA a permit or ag allowing them to start their op operations here, even though they're being stalled by Curacao? I was just going to say, I think the, the issue with AVA right now is an issue between Curacao and AVA. So it's not, it's not an issue with St. Martin at, um, at this stage. And um, uh, that situation is playing itself out in court, so I would await and see how that goes. It, it's 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 not a issue with the matter right now. It's an issue with Curacao and AVA. So Saint Martin, according to AVA representative, they submitted a request to Saint Martin. They also have to get a, a permit from Saint Martin, and it's not being processed. As I said, Insular right now has the um, the attention. Mm -hmm. Insular is an operating airline. Um, uh, we all use Insel to travel between the islands. That has the priority right now to make sure that um, people, whether for pleasure or for business or uh, whatever other reasons, that they have adequate and safe air travel between the islands. And that is what has my priority right now. I'm, I'm, I'm following the, the, the situation with AVA, but like I said, that's an issue playing itself out in courts in Curacao right now. Thank you, Minister Boseman. Uh, Minister of Romy, um, I listened keenly at all that you had to say about the road patching. Uh, it's been years, years upon years. St. Martin is using one uh, way, patching roads, um, patching holes. But as soon as you get some rain, there goes the road, uh, and we're in the same situation again. How sturdy is the repairs that have been done by the same contract over the past years? And do you plan, as Minister of Romy, to, re to revisit how we repair our roads and to make it more sturdy and that it can last longer? Because as soon as you get rain, everything that they place there now washes away and there comes the potholes again. Thank you very much for your question, Bibi. And of course, that's why I mentioned <coughs> I myself and earlier I had an issue with patching of roads because you can only patch so many times. And what comes when you patch roads constantly over and over and over is a change in the height of the road. Because what happens is, again, you would see the white line where they would mark it out, and then they would go with asphalt and fill in that spot, get the presser and press it down, but it never comes back to the same level of the road. If you drive on the Pondfield Road or the Walter Nisbet Road as it was before, you would drive at one level and certain times you would go up on a bump and then you would come down. That is what happens when you just patch there, patch there, patch there. Hence the reason why now you are seeing a much more longer meter, so probably two or three hundred meters of the road now, you are seeing resurfaced and not patched. And of course, I understand the question you asked concerning the, the number one contractor. It's not necessarily the number one contractor, but it's the only supplier of asphalt on St. Martin and the equipment that we use, and that's Windward Roads. And of course, there's discussions going on as how we can see, we can make it much better and long lasting concerning the durability of the road and the conditions that they're in. I've always had a problem in the manner of which roads have been built here in St. Martin. If you look here, carefully, water always settles on the road. And you always ask a question, the question why? It's a matter of how they have been built. But now if you look at it, and then, then again, that's what I say, you know, I have to commend the professionals within the ministry who have been working in this field for a number of years. Because in discussion, they themselves have been saying that a new method or a new way moving forward need to be had concerning how roads are being done on St. Martin. So if you look carefully at them right now, most of them are being resurfaced in an oval manner. 
where now the water would run off at the side. But remember, we have a drainage problem also throughout the island. So you could understand why the water used to settle in the middle of the road, but by doing that, it damages the road very quickly. But now we're going to have the water running off on the side of the road, and there's no sidewalks, and then people will be walking on the side of the road in the water, in the mud, and different things like that. So it's a, it's a whole approach concerning road structure and road network on the island. And with that being said, we also have a sewage problem that plays into the durability and the long lasting of our roads when we recap them, resurface them, or patch them. And I can tell you, I can assure you that these things are being looked into, they are being worked on. But remember, we have a budget constraints. So you can only do so much and so many things. So what is it you want? recap the road, resurface the road, or patch the road, or look at a holistic approach where we can get the entire government, the entire uh, institutions such as the harbor, the airport, and everyone involved to take care of the, the basic, basic needs that St. Martin needs. Roads, housing, sewage, everything that goes so that I understand when the Minister of Finance talk and say that we need to be cognizant of our budget is because we have a priority list. And what are you going to target first. And I can tell you, and the Minister of Finance can tell you also, that we are always in discussion. And I would run into his office and say, Minister, I need money. I need money. We, we have Waymond Hill. We have inside where the Honorable Minister of Education is living. Yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a private road, but she can tell you about the condition of the road. But you don't have private citizens living in there. You have regular, normal citizens living in there. Ambulance can't get in, fire trucks can't get in because of the condition that the road is in, you know? And, and again, like I said, the Minister of Finance would tell you, and he would say, you have money on your budget. Spend it, and we will get more. We will find more, and we will do all these necessary things so that we can get money to do the basic things. I'm putting him on the spot now, but that's the reality. <laughs> that's the reality of it. We are working within a budget, and this is what the budget allows us to do, and we are trying to get as much done as possible in a structural manner with what we have to spend. Um, I think this is my final question for now. A um, couple of weeks ago, um, there's a vacancy on the GEBE board. I understood you had a swarm of candidates that apply for the position. Has anybody been selected to fill the position on the supervisory board of GEBE? You're talking about the position that was made available when the Honorable Member of Parliament, now Romeo Pantoflet, advocated yes. the position. No one has been selected as yet for the position. A number of candidates a number of candidates have approached it, have approached the ministry who would like to do their civic duty and want to serve and be part of a government institution. The Council of Ministers, my person, the staff, no one has discussed as yet who we have in mind, but there are a number of candidates that we are looking at. But no one has been selected as yet, no. Thank you, Bibi, for your questions. Andrew, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning to the ministers. Minister Boseman, the United States preclearance talks, um, of course, in Holland, they have stopped the talks because of the, the U.S. president's um, policies on immigration. Um, St. Martin had to be also, um, well, get in the preclearance as soon as possible. How are the talks going? Are they still going ahead? Yeah, it's still a, a, a priority for St. Martin. It is very important um, for our economy, the further development of our economy. Um, it, it, it has not been a discussion within the Council of Ministers um, not to continue with it. So, uh, therefore, I can safely say that, um, that that is still the intention to do it. Uh, we met with a representative of the um, TSA uh, I think uh, last week, uh, yeah, last week, and um, the there 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 are two things in preparation. There are a number of um, agreements that we've been looking at. One one the air marshal agreement and the other assistance agreement that um, the ministry is looking at and, and 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 seeing whether or not it is feasible to to enter these agreement and um, how soon. And at the other hand, uh, there, there's a lot of um, um, infrastructural 
um, um, activities also that need to take place in preparation for that, um, which is in the, the airport itself. So those discussions are, are continuing, those preparations are continuing, and as they progress, you will be kept uh, informed. Okay. Um, coming back to the prison, um, with a weapon found um, yesterday, it would be somewhat of a fourth, the fourth weapon um, found at the prison um, under this management, the current management that is there. Do you s have any concern con um, or to strengthen the management or to change management? Um, any strategy when it comes to the prison? Because we, we know you say that it's a priority, but um, nothing has been changed, <laughs> so to speak. We are finding the weapons before they kill people. So that's a, a, a big change. Yes, there is, there is a, a, a concern. The, 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 the prison, you know, if it was as easy as to change a person and everything would be good, then I think it would have been done a long time. Um, the the uh, Minister of Romy, when explaining about the road network, talked about a holistic approach. And, um, you know, <laughs> and about the patching of the, wo uh, of the roads. This is a, a basically a similar situation. You cannot patch. You should, you should not just patch this, fix, do something here and not do that there. And we are looking at the total picture. That includes management, that includes the, 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 the infrastructure of the prison, that includes staff training, um, and uh, 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 the, the, the plan of action and things that have already been on the books have to be um, executed. And yes, I have serious concern with the situation um, with, with, with management. But that does not mean that the solution to that is to say, okay, get rid of John and put in Peter. So um, you would have to bear with me. And like I said, you're dealing with, we're dealing with people. And um, um, uh, some, some, you know, there are they're, they're active investigations going on. Mm -hmm. The police and the prosecutors have their job to do. And, and, and trust me, they, they are relentlessly looking into how these weapons get into um, the prison and people will be held accountable because people's lives are being put in, 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 in danger by these irresponsible acts. So, uh, you know, sometimes I wish I could say more, but I cannot say more. But, um, um, and that's why I, 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 I am not running from it at the, at the, at the press briefings because it is important that the public know that it has the attention. And sooner or later, and hopefully sooner, we will be seeing um, some results of, of, of the, the things that are being done. All right. Uh, Minister Jacobs, um, the Prince Willem Alexander School upgrading. Um, last week, you had a meeting with the St. Peter's uh, committee, community. Um, you did not mention it in your um, update, so I just wanted to know how it went, and um, when will the removal begin of the asbestos? Um, thank you for that question. I believe I had discussed where we were last week. Yes, the meeting did take place. I was personally not present, but um, the ministry was represented by the division head and the SG of the ministry, um, as well as Vromi New Works, the contractor, the asbestos removal company, uh, etc. So that was slated to to have started, I believe, this week. I'm not sure exactly of the dates because uh, I did say so last week. Um, and that would take, um, the removal would take approximately a week or two weeks and then the contractor would be able to start. But the, according to the reports I received, the information session went well. The public was informed about the situation and um, I believe certain aspects that have to be dealt with via the Ministry of Romi will take place as needed in terms of the removal and uh, how it has to be dealt with after it's removed, after it's disposed. What was also brought out was that there are different levels and it one, it's one of the least, the ones that was detected there is one of the least contamin contaminable. So it's pretty easy to contain and it will be dealt with as such. The decision was just has to be made on whether it will be shipped out or um, buried here. Thank you, Andrew. Radio listeners, television viewers, if you have joined us, we are now tuned in to 
the Council of Ministers live press briefing. At this time, we'll go over to the second round of questioning. Bibi, the floor is yours. Thank you, Marsha. Um, Minister Emmanuel, I'm really happy that you brought up the private road where Minister Jacob is living that is in a deplor deplorable condition. But there's another road just last week. There was a fire at Plum Drive, a plow drive in Cul-de-Sac. That road is in a state. There is an open cistern there. Do you have any plans for that road also? Because like, if it might be a private road, but there are public citizens living there too. I know exactly what you're talking about, Bibi. And again, thank you for the question you see let me let me say this right there are things that have been created in our society in our country for a number of years and they have sort of become monuments in our country that simply can't be just tackled a day after a day you really need to sit down with everyone involved the fire department the police department the ambulance services government and structure how are we going to move forward dealing with these issues? Because in that area, the ambulance and the fire truck can't get up a certain height. They can't reach a certain level simply because the condition of, I wouldn't even call it a road, but the, the, the movable area that you have to traverse to get to the different homes and location. It's simply how the houses was built. It's private area, individuals lease the land, people build how they want. And these are things that have been done over a number of years. So it's a matter of talking to the families, getting them together. And it, it takes an approach of how are we gonna move forward with housing? Because you'll have to re relocate individuals. Houses will have to be removed to have things done properly where the emergency services can get to those in need. So to ask the question now, no, I don't have a plan or an approach. How are we going to move forward with this? But I look at the situation, I know what you're talking about. For example, let's take behind the old cake house. They're going, going to Cold Bay across from Kuiman if we, if we look at that also, right? We had fires in that area also, and the truck can only reach a certain area because the road is narrow, but it's a private location where families own the land, own the property, and they lease it out to individuals. And what would happen, they would build their homes. We have a shack policy, so what would they do to circumvent that? They would put mesh wire on the wooden homes and start to flash it with mortar and plaster it up and from the outside it looks like concrete but on the inside it's a wooden structure so again it's a matter of engaging discussion with the families but that's their livelihood so what are you going to do to compensate you don't want to come with a hard hand and say well these things are built illegally sewage is running in the road you have to be removed it takes time and it will take some time to find a solution for that and in the meanwhile again you have to congratulate the fire department and the ambulance services because with their experience, they still just find a way to reach and get a job done. But no, at present, I don't have a structural plan on how we're going to move forward dealing with these situations. It's just to reach out to, to the community and say, please be vigilant. Please be careful in your homes with fires and all those sort of things. At least the health issue regarding the open cistern, and we have had so many um, mosquito-related uh, viruses on the island, Zika, Chikungunya, I can name them. Um, are you going to talk to your, your colleague minister of VSR to see what can be done with that at least? I know about the cistern. I didn't know it had a cistern there, but I was told that there is a cistern there. And again, knowing that my colleague is, is, is our fighter, I'm also, I'm also responsible for the ministry. But m concerning those sort of things, my approach is to wait until the minister, we can have a discussion because it's going to involve also the ministry of roaming. How are we going to deal with it? Because whether we're going to break it down, whether we're going to fill it up, whether we're going to you know, um, um, soft surface inside that area and, and, and s different discussions that are, have to be taken. You know, he'll be back soon and we will be having a discussion about that particular assessment. However, there's a number of those things throughout the island. Again, you, you, you know, 
St. Martin's a beautiful place, you know. I came on a plane back from Miami the other day, and we had some visitors who was coming back here after 35 years. And their thing was, it's just a place where they want to be. That was the words that they mentioned. It's just a place that they want to be. We had a number of wells, a number of springs throughout this whole entire island. And that's where you see wells up in the cul-de-sac basin, going up in South Reward, St. Peter's in cul-de-sac. And that is what happened, how we used to, you know, hold our water to, 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 to use for ourselves and use for our animals. So to address it, you, it, it's, not, it's not just for one person to go and make a decision. You need to know what the health de department think about it. You need to know what the fire department think about it. You need to know what the, 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 the professionals down at the Vrami ministry thinks about it and how we're going to go along dealing with these areas and certain things like that. Thank you, Minister, for being very open on that topic. Thank you. Uh, Minister Boseman, um, my colleague asked you about the prison, and I'm going to go there because um, the answers you gave is like a broken CD all other ministers have given in the past. Um, yes, we have a plan, of, we have some actions, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. But the actions taken are putting strain on other departments such as KPSM that you yourself have said is, is on the man. Um, KPSM is not responsible for the prison. The prison has a management. If the management is not functioning, I'm not telling you to get rid of people. What about having it reinforced? I mean, the people that are there today that you're dealing with, other ministers spoke to them before. There are other incidents. They have dealt with it. Now today, yeah, we have some actions. Why didn't they do the same thing before? Why aren't we going in the right direction to curb the situation? Because actually what you told my colleague is all the other ministers said the same thing, and it sounds like BB, a broken BB, CD. please give the minister a chance to answer your question. Minister? Yeah, and BB, I understand, is a very... Um, emotional situation and I too get emotional when I think and, um, about the, 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 the situation that is happening on the, on the, on the prison. I, I, I don't know what previous ministers um, said or, or did. All I know, I know almost every one of the persons who held this portfolio and I know they are honorable people who have St. Martin at heart. Mm -hmm. And they, are all, they have all been um, outstanding professionals in our community. So. That tells me that it is not a one-two fix, okay? Because um, uh, <laughs> real heavy professionals were busy at it, and there are so many other factors that factor in into fixing that problem that um, um, we should not underestimate. And 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 the public, yes, the public had a right to to keep pressing and 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 demanding. Um, the KPSM is not running the prison. Okay, so the, 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 there is no additional pressure being put on the KPSM as far as the prison is concerned. On the contrary, this, this particular um, search, um, assistance from the Marines were called in. Okay, so yes, and different agency because the KPSM is, the, the Marines are not police. The, 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 the Marines are military um, uh, people and there, there are protocols of how um, they, they could and should um, operate. So uh, the different units, like, like the, the Justice K-9 units that have the, the, the trained police dogs, etc., yeah, they would be called in, but they would be called in not only for prison operation, any other law enforcement operation that require the use of the, the K-9, because that's where that specialty is, 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 is centered. Um, Again, I, I, I would have, and again, with the risk of sounding like a broken record, but um, uh, look, I can go and put my plan from A to Z in a newspaper, and I think the wrong people would be um, um, hearing what exactly we plan to do or will be doing, and uh, before we even get to it, they would have the, the, the counter to those plans. That's, that's the risk. So. Um, some of these things um, will become noticeable um, um, as we progress. For instance, the, 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 the frequency of the searches, the, 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 the combination of teams that do um, the searches, etc. Those results um, would, would, would be seen, the investigations that are taking place as to how these things, how this contraband is getting in, in, into the prison. 
and real, real in, in investigation where people would be held accountable. People would be, if found to be involved, would be punished and severely punished. Okay, the, these are, uh, are some of the steps. And I'm sure you would understand that how exactly the details that we are going to be doing it, I cannot say. So with the with with risk of, 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 of indeed sounding like a broken record, um, uh, hopefully as we go along, um, I will be able to point out to more results. As, as, as uh, uh, come back here, I may be able to say something of how what was actually done to upgrade management, for instance, et cetera. Thank you, Bibi, for your question. Andrew, the floor is yours. Yes, um, Minister Bosman, the ACPOL program from the police, I don't know if you received an update. Um, I know that the police was working on some type of their <coughs> own software instead of um, using the ACPOL. Is that still the case? Um, the, the, the situation with the ACPOL and all other, there was the, the, the justice information system that was also um, been work on. I have um, this. I have had discussions on the situation and been updated with the with the ACPOL situation. The ACPOL situation has to do partly with um, finances and the responsibility of the of the um, who, who holds responsibility for the data, etc. Uh, Minister Gibson and. Um, and myself had, had entertained with others um, the discussions on the ACPOL. I have a meeting coming up, um, I think next week, um, to on the on the justice information system. Um, the justice information system was a program that was invested in. A lot of money was invested in it, and not being used or not completely being used. And um, uh, again, it's it's. Um, um, it's, it's, it's being worked on. Minister Gibson, thank you, Minister. Yeah. Minister Gibson, my um, colleagues would, um, at the Herald would like to know um, if there's any update on the law school. I know that's something that you've mentioned um, last year, but we didn't hear from you this year concerning that. So is it still a priority for you? Well, I think, um, good morning, everybody. I think uh, that I did mention uh, this year uh, that we are, uh, we have allocated one million guilders in the budget for the law school. We want to make certain that when we start that it would have sustainability. One million guilders is not sufficient. Uh, hence we have embarked on the process of uh, trying to attract donations, large donations. We have spoken to several people who have been uh, quite um, cooperative and made some promises and commitment. Um, I believe that we could kick this off once we have two million guilders and not one uh, to achieve that sustainability that I think is needed when we get started. Uh, but all of these things I've, I've mentioned this year um, uh, as to what we're doing as far as the law school is concerned. Uh, also mentioned, and I can rem I can recall somebody asked, you know, in Parliament, um, what is the Minister of Finance doing with the law school? It should be under the Minister of Education, quite correctly. And I said, listen, uh, the idea is to create the foundation as far as the funds are concerned, and the moment that occurs to turn it over to the Minister of Education who together with the University of St. Martin will deal with curriculum and all of the other details for it. But until that point, I certainly don't want to burden the, M the Minister of Education with more problems uh, than she already has. Thank you, You're welcome. Thank you, Andrew, for your last question. Honorable Mem Ministers of the Council, oh, excuse me, um, I am getting a message here from the Minister of Education, and she would like to address you on another topic. Minister? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Marsha. Just um, to interject, I did um, have an announcement that I didn't make earlier pertaining to a congratulatory message, actually, to our school athletes or our interscholastic 
athletic competition was held uh, over the weekend of January 27th and some 12 young students were chosen from St. Martin to represent St. Martin in inter insular competition with Curaçao Aruba Bonaire. So just wanted to say congratulations to them. And um, last year for the first time we did this with one team of basketball and one volleyball secondary and basketball primary. So this was um, primary schools, athletic meet, and uh, the winners came from various schools and I would like to congratulate them and implore them to continue to train hard so that we can represent well in Saint, uh, represent St. Martin well. Um, I believe we have some other students to field, so there will be more competitions as it goes along. But I always use this opportunity to big up our young people when I can. Thank you.